Tombstone, Arizona Territory, April 9, 1883. Mine disaster. Another cave in deep in the muddy shale tunnel of Gurney, mine number five. There's no need for the sheriff to go in so far. No, probably couldn't find any more of them. He's still breathing. Drive them into town easy as you can. That's all there are. Carl Vogel won't be coming out. Yeah. All accounted for, Hollister? Yeah, except for Vogel. Tunnel caved in at least 50 feet this side of where he was working. Get the rest of them back to work, Mr. Jameson. I want a new shaft north from the cave in. You're not sending them back into that death trap, are you? This is a third cave in this spring. Seven men, Mr. Gurney. I'm not forcing anybody to work for me. If they can find other jobs, let them. Get started, Mr. Jameson. All right, men. Let's get moving. Back to work, everybody. Actual account from the pages of my newspaper, the Tombstone Epitaph. This is the way it happened. In the town too tough to die. Tombstone Territory. Another mine disaster in Tombstone. Anson Gurney, owner of the mine, had a ready answer. Open another shaft. Continue the work at any price, including human life. Harris, there has to be a law to stop these disasters. In Gurney's mine and all the mines. A man can't be without reason. He's without conscience. How can we get a law? Territorial legislature isn't in session. And, of course, with Gurney's influence, you know, the rest of the territory isn't interested. Even Tombstone doesn't care, except for the miners and their widows. Oh, we can make them care. We'll write out the provisions of a law and let the epitaph sell it. Well, we can try it. Maybe we can scare Gurney into closing up number five. Anybody you two could scare couldn't amount to much. Collecting my daily salary, Sheriff. In case I want to see me some new country, I don't want to be bothered hunting up his honor, the editor, to collect what's coming to me. <laughs> Fred, why don't you settle down? Oh, I never stay in one town more than a month. Now, if you two fellas can hang on to me for, oh, say, two more weeks, you will have broken the record. Why don't you hang it up? There's another nail. Uh, and get dust all over it? You know, Fred, if you'd settle down for a while and stay on, you could afford to buy yourself a new hat. That hat was given to me by none other than Horace Greeley himself. Why don't you go arrest somebody, Sheriff? We got work to do. I'm gonna go check on the office, Harris. After that, we'll go lay on the line for Gurney. You better remake the front page, Fred. Another cave in? Fred, the sheriff and the upper tap are going to wage a fight for mine safety legislation. Why don't you stick around and help us? I'm a printer. I'll never be killed in a mine cave in. Well, I'm afraid you're wasting your time, Sheriff. There's no law that compels me to spend $100,000 to timber a tunnel that won't yield 50. 
But, Mr. Gurney, I'm not talking as the law. I'm just a plain citizen asking you either to close number five or make it safe. Your number three is no safer, Mr. Gurney. Neither is number eight. Underground seepage from the San Pedro River has turned them both into wet, crumbling honeycombs. <laughs> Underground seepage. Have you ever studied the geology of this area, Mr. Jameson? There's a network of tributary streams running under all of the tombstone diggings. We've never had any trouble in three or eight. Why, of course not. And when we do, if we do, we'll spend what's necessary to keep them producing. That satisfy you, gentlemen? No, Mr. Gurney, it doesn't. The territorial legislature can force you to make those mines safe or close them before there's trouble. Yeah. I'm afraid the Cochise County representatives won't see the necessity. People will. The epitaph's gonna tell them about it. Well, Mr. Clyburn wants to take that sort of advantage. You're welcome to space in the epitaph, Mr. Gurney. I, for one, would be interested in how you explain your lack of concern for the men who work your mines. Well, I might take you up on that offer. But in the meantime, let's see what you print. <laughs> I guess I finally taught you how to write a headline. That's a lot of signatures, Mr. Gurney. Well, then a few thousand dollars spent to nullify them is very little. The territorial legislature goes back into session in a week. The Cochise County boys are not introducing mine safety legislation. The epitaph's got circulation all around the territory. Circulation, yes. But no influence. Where it comes. Well, where have you been? I've been looking all over for you. Read this. From the governor. Epitaph proposals deserve immediate legislative action. Suggest you meet in Tucson Thursday with delegates from Pima, Maricopa, Gila, and Coconino counties. Assure you sympathetic hearing and my personal backing. Harris, we got him licked. Close to it, I'd say. Thought you might be interested, Sheriff. His honor, the editor, dashed off someplace like his coattail was embroidered with dynamite. You sure didn't waste any time getting these out. Epitaph will meet top lawmakers. I'm going to deliver a couple of these myself. Mr. Gurney, I was just coming out to your place. Well, Clyburn will be in Tucson until Friday. Hmm? Well, at least we'll be spared this sort of sensationalism for a couple of days. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Gurney, but the epitaph will be coming out just as usual. I've had the pleasure, gents. What's this all about? I'm Anson Gurney. Your editor offered me space in the paper whenever I wanted it. He has a habit of playing square. I'm taking that space right now. Front page. 
Oh, you'll notice the article says, by Harris Clyburn. Well, that's right. It's all about me. Sort of a reflection of Clyburn's own opinion. If I print this under Clyburn's byline, you'll have a libel suit against him. A pip of the libel suit. Exactly. A libel suit that'll discredit everything he's written about my mines. One that'll drive the epitaph right out of business. The sheriff? He makes his rounds about two or three o'clock. He probably won't stop in. And again, he might. One wrong move out of you and both of you get it. One wrong move. Red. Look, I'm busy. I got a paper to get out. Yeah. Any word from Harris? Look, why don't you go arrest somebody, Sheriff? <laughs> you know, now I know why you never stay anyplace very long. You're antisocial. in the window. How'd you like $500 and a fast horse? We'll take it. That's Clyburn's. $500 on the fast horse. I'd drive a short bargain. Go ahead, Mr. Jameson. Dynamite? When the men come to work, Mr. Jameson, at last now might attract attention. at the opening session of the legislature, and it's sure to pass, if we keep on fighting. Hey, I'll hand it to you, Mr. Editor. You really call a spade a spade. April 12, 1883. The latest edition of the Epitaph had come out with a libelous front page story about Anson Gurney and his mining operations. And the man responsible for the printing of the story had disappeared. He skipped town, all right. Wasn't at the boarding house. Nobody's seen him. I guess I'll just have to send out his description on the telegraph. Oh, let him go. Wouldn't do any good if we found him. The damage is done. 
As editor and publisher, I'm legally responsible for everything the epitaph prints. Mm -hmm. Why? Why would he do it? I would have trusted that old fellow with my... in there about 20, 30 feet and touch it off. Understand? I told you Mr. Gurney wants number five closed. You still got jobs. Report number three as soon as we're through here. What's going on? Routine blasting, Sheriff. Since when has it been routine for Gurney to shut off a mine that might have a dime's worth of ore left in it? Mr. Gurney and I don't want to expose our miners to any danger. You're a little bit late. About three cave-ins too late? You and your editor friend uh, have been working up a big head of steam for nothing. Martin Tyre? Yes, indeed, Mr. Tyre. I've just retained him as my attorney. deny any prior knowledge of that article. I was in Tucson when it appeared. Now I'll be happy to print a retraction. I demand legal vindication. Your vicious irresponsibility is going to be exposed to the entire territory. I'm filing suit in Mr. Gurney's behalf for $100,000. Counselor? I'll need you later, Sheriff. I want you to serve a summons. How much do they want? A hundred thousand dollars? Man, I couldn't even meet a judgment for five thousand. Well, maybe you won't have to. Well, I wish you could tell me how. Look, Harris. Fred wouldn't leave town without his hat and his watch unless he couldn't help himself. There's only one logical explanation for this. Gurney is trying to kill our mine legislation, and with you in Tucson, he saw his chance. I think he forced Fred to print that article, and then killed him. Well, what makes you think that? If he killed him, where's the body? They've sealed off Gurney number five with dynamite. Sealed it off for good, just before I got there. Well, then, if your hunch is right, Fred's body's in that mine shaft. Yeah. What good's a hunch you can't prove? But I got another hunch. 
After I left the mine, I rode over to the San Pedro River. I found what I was looking for. A man's body it was hung up in the rocks. Who, Fred's? I thought you said you didn't find him. It wasn't Fred's. But uh, my hunch is going to pay off. I'll need his hat and a bucket of water. Time. Just the second time Hollis has been out today. Think they'll find anything, Mr. Jameson? Nothing. There's nothing they can find. Well, then don't act like there was. Don't get bluffed out of a stake we've already won. We'll have to kind of play this by ear, Harris. All right. Out looking for news, Clyborne? So you finally sealed it off, Gurney. Tight as a drum. Then the epitaph accomplished something after all. Clyburn, you don't want to face a libel suit in judgment you can't possibly pay, do you? I might make a deal with you. I'll listen. First, you'll make your statement that everything you printed about me was a lie. I've offered to print a retraction for what appeared in my newspaper. Your lawyer wouldn't hear of it. And after you've done that, I'm going to buy the epitaph from you for one dollar cash. Thanks. I think I'll take my chance in open court. Well, I tried, Mr. Jameson. Let him try to pay off a $100,000 judgment. There's one other matter, Mr. Gurney. I found a body this morning. Oh, really? Where? Floating in the San Pedro River. Well, perhaps then you should be doing what you usually do under these circumstances. I want to show you something. Harris, would you? You know, I always thought that there was an underground stream just below that shaft. A stream running straight into the San Pedro. Thanks, Harris. It's still wet. Whose is it? Belonged to an old printer on the epitaph. And there are 50 men in town who will swear that Fred Ellis never went anywhere without it. So he... Fell in the San Pedro and was drowned. Fell in? No, I don't think so, Mr. Gurney. I can prove it by comparing some bullets. Jameson, give me your gun. My gun? You're the kind that follows orders and gets charged with murder. Gurney, what are we going to do? He's going to go to trial, just like you were. <laughs> Give me a knife. Gurney, using your dynamite on you just like you and Jameson did to seal in the old man's body. Twenty-second fuse. Oh, you gun out first if you're coming. Maybe you'd like to die like you let your miners die in a cave-in. I'm coming out! Put it out, put it out! Put it out yourself. It's just a fuse. But it's gonna blow a confession out of you. Jameson killed him. I didn't do it. Emerson did what you told him to. He wasn't smart enough to plant that article in the epitaph. Oh, by the way, the man that you and Jameson murdered is still in the mine. But the body, the body in the river. There was a body. And in a way, you killed him, too. We couldn't find Carl Vogel after that cave-in last week, you remember? When they pass those mine safety regulations, I'll send you a copy of the epitaph announcing it. Don't trouble yourself. What's no trouble? I've got a wide distribution, even as far as Yuma Prison.
Whistle me up a memory. Whistle me back where I want to be. Whistle a tune that'll carry me to Tombstone Territory. If your past has run afoul of the law, it's a handy place to be. Cause your future's just as good as your draw in Tombstone Territory. Whistle me up, a memory. Whistle me back where 